By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to dive into the world of Highlander magic. We're going to play Brothers of Fire Highlander. How cool is that? And here you already see a picture of the decks that we're playing with today. Now, first let me tell you what Highlander is in case you don't know. So Highlander, uh, the name Highlander comes from the series and the movie Highlander where um, in the show there can be only one, right? There's are Highlanders that have eternal life. They have to fight each other with swords and when they chop off their heads, they're dead. Like it's very gruesome, I guess. Uh, but that's where Highlander comes from. And Highlander is a magic format where you build a deck consisting out of 100 cards and only one copy of each card is allowed, except for basic lands, of course, right? So you can only play with one dual land of each. You can only play with, I don't know, one preacher, whatever. So only with singles. And the idea behind this is that by doing this, you create a lot of variety. Like what you want in Highlander is you want to see quirky, original decks. Like it's a fun format. You want to you wanna give a moment to those cards that usually don't see the day of light. They don't see a playing table anywhere anymore. And you want to create a format where that's possible again. Now, this is, of course, old school Highlander. And what does that mean? That means that there are only a few sets from 1993 and 1994 that are allowed. So the legal sets here are Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, Antiquities, Arabian Nights, Legends, The Dark, Fallen Empires, and the 93-94 promo cards, uh, for example, Arena. Now, um, again, each playgroup can make up their own mind if they want to allow reprints. As you can see, I'm playing with tons of reprints, so I'm assuming it's all right. And knowing Brother Ben and Brother Boyle, we're playing a casual game, I'm sure they're fine with it as well. Talking about that, um, we're playing Brothers Highlander. Now, Brothers Highlander is a little bit different because in Brothers Highlander, uh, they, they use a controlled list. And what that means is you've got 10 points to pick cards from the controlled list. So on the controlled list are, are the usual suspects like Ancestral Recall, Jam De Tome, um, Soul Ring. And the thing is, when you're playing this format a lot, and I haven't done that yet, but I think uh, Jordan and Ben have, uh, when you're playing this format a lot, you keep seeing the same cards coming back over and over again, and you probably want to see some more variety. Now, to accomplish this, uh, to make sure that you get a lot of variety in a lot of different decks, which is basically the whole idea of Highlander, they've created a point list. So here on the screen, you can see uh, the point list itself. And what that basically does is because you can only spend 10 points, you cannot make the obvious choices. You cannot say, you know what, I'm going to play Soul Ring, I'm going to play Ancestral Recall, I'm going to play Jam Day Tome, I'm going to play Time Walk. You can't do that. That's way too many, uh, many points. So you really have to make conscious choice. Do I really want to play a Soul Ring? Because it's five points. Do I really want to use half of my points that I can spend on powerful cards on a Soul Ring? Do I want to play Mirror Universe, which is huge in multiplayer? It's going to cost me eight points. So, you know, you have to make all these decisions. Certain cards you cannot play together because they're just too many points. For example, Mirror Universe and Black Lotus, uh, you cannot do that because Black Lotus is seven points, Mirror Universe is eight, right? So then you're 15 points. You can't do that because you only have 10 points to spend. Now, um, if you're looking for um, kind of a controlled format like this, a controlled list, I can really recommend the Brothers Highlander rules because... These guys take old school magic seriously and these guys just want to enjoy the format. So I just know that this list is tweaked and this list makes absolute sense. So if you're looking for something like this, I would definitely re recommend using this list. If you want to make your own, of course, go ahead, do what you like. You know, th th that's what it's all about. Play magic in the way you enjoy it. But I think this list is very, very solid. Talking about that list, by the way, if you're looking at my deck picture, I've actually spent way too many points on my deck. Why is that? I didn't know we were going to play this format. So we were kind of meeting up uh, on a Friday. No, it was a Monday. We're meeting up on a Monday evening and we're just slinging some spells, playing some games. And then I think it was Ben or Jordan who said, you know what, let's play a game of Highlander. And do you have a hundred card deck? And I'm like, well, yeah, I got a hundred card deck, um, but it's probably not according to the Highlander rules. And they said, you know what, it's fine as long as it's, you know, not the boring thing, but something original, it's fine. So I decided to take my uh, my revised Umetsawa 
uh, deck that I've actually used for some commander games on the channel as well. And as you can already see, with just a quick glance, there are some really powerful high point cards in here. For example, that Soul Ring I mentioned before, that's five points alone, that's in the deck. GM Tomes in the deck, Demonic Tutors in the deck, Brain Geysers in the deck. So it, it's not fair, right? My deck has got too many points. So please, when you're playing Brothers Highlander, don't just copy my deck. You got to definitely tweak it because it's, it's too many points. That being said, uh, we played some really, really fun games. And I'm looking forward to showing it to you. Um, what else is there to say? Well, actually, uh, this is it. I'm not going to do a, a deck deck for this video today just because I just want to jump in the games as quickly as possible. So feel free to kind of pause the button here and have a look at these deck pictures. They're really beautiful. Maybe you're also wondering why is he playing Brother Ben and Brother Boyle? I mean, who are these people? Well, that's kind of a fun thing. Uh, they're part of the Brothers of Fire in London, right? The old school group. And there they call each other Brother Ben and Brother Boyle. So I guess for this episode, I kind of feel like a Brother Timmy, which is kind of nice. Um, by the way, like I said, we, we met up for this game on uh, Monday evening. If you want to join this, uh, these guys, I'm going to put a link in the description below. And there you can find the Facebook group of uh, The Hive. It's a group in South England. And that's where we all actually met up for this particular game. So if you're interested in that, there's a link in the description below. I will also place a link to the Brothers of Fire uh, Highlander page. Okay, this is enough intro talk. I'm sorry, I'm being a little bit broad today. Enough intro talk. Let's start with the games. And I've got actually two games. So let's start with game one. And here we go. Game number one is about to begin. We're drawing our cards. As you can see, um, I'm sitting there with the white sleeves. Jordan Boyle is playing a blue and black deck. We see it on the screen right now. Um, he's playing with the black sleeves. And interestingly here uh, about his deck, when I'm looking at this list, is that it, it looks quite aggressive, to be honest. Um, usually with these Highlander decks, these longer games, um, you choose to play more like down low with heavy costing uh, creatures, but we see Jordan has got some aggressiveness in the deck, you know. Um, he, he's, got, he's got some big beaters, though, don't get me wrong. I mean, he's playing Mamo to Jin, Tetravus, um, you know, he's, he's got some of the bigger creatures, but also some more aggressive ones like Urg Raiders, for example. I wouldn't really expect an Urg Raiders in a format like this, so it's really cool to see that. Also playing with, um, uh, what are they called again? Drowned, one blue and one for one, one regenerator. Uh, does he also play ghost ship? I don't see a ghost ship here. Maybe I'm missing it though, but that would have been, oh yeah, he is playing with the ghost ship. There it is. Um, you can see it right under the Surrender Pafrit. Surrender Pafrit, another pretty aggressive deck. And then we also have, uh, of course, the deck of Ben. And Ben is actually playing three colors and he's also playing with Arcades uh, Sabbath, the legendary uh, dragon so it's white green and blue but as you can see on the deck on the deck photo his main color really is uh, white that's that's his get to go color and in that sense I'm a bit of an oddball out here because I've really built a three color deck making my deck um, you know a little bit vulnerable to to of course finding the right mana and here we see the opening of brother Ben so he's starting with a mana vault turn one and then it's Jordan's turn so I guess we're going uh, counterclockwise for this one that's a bit confusing I'm starting with a um, volcanic island and passing turn here to Jordan who's starting uh, with one of those fallen empire tap lands really love the art of this one by the way if you have time check out the art on this one it's really cool oh talking about cool cards we see Jordan coming up with a giant tortoise which is really a cool card from Arabian Nights one blue and one to cast uh, basically for a 1-4, because as long as you keep it untapped, it gets plus 0, plus 3. So it's a very solid blocker. And he's not playing out a third lands. He's kind of stuck on lands here for Jordan. And I'm going to cast my first creature. There's the often troll. 2-2, two, two, red creature with one red regenerate. So now it's pretty vulnerable still. Hopefully it can survive a turn, and then it can keep a red up to regenerate. Ooh, Tetravus! But there we see a mana drain. You can see I'm really happy about the drain here from Jordan. This is great when you're playing multiplayer. Two players using their resources on each other. And it looks like Jordan has finally found another land. So there's a basic swamp. He's got those six mana, of course, from countering the Tetravus. What is he going to do here? Looks like he's a little bit in the tank, tapping black here for, ooh, Dark Ritual, even more mana. So now he's got nine mana in his mana pool, three black and six colorless. So he's going to use one of the colorless and two of the black to cast Royal Assassin. And something else is coming, ooh, Air Elemental. This is a good turn for Jordan. Look at his board go. 
And I don't believe there's mana burn in here. And it also looks like we've all started on 20 lives, by the way. So you can kind of choose. Usually with Highlander, you would start on a higher life total. But we chose to start on 20. You can also start on 30 or on, on 40. Whatever you feel like, you know. If you've got a lot of time, just start with more life, I guess. And I'm playing a Jam Day Tome here. And passing turn to Ben. Ben is a little bit working on his lighting. <laughs> I mean, he's, he doesn't have a lot of play space, you know? I mean, maybe that's going to be a problem. Passing turn to Jordan. Jordan attacking here, attacking me, actually, with the air elemental. Oh, man, dropping to 16. I guess I'm being kind of a fret with that book. Uh, what am I going to do here? Playing a swamp. It's always good to have all the colored manas. Maybe I need... I do have two red and two blue and two black, thanks to the volcanic island, so that's pretty sweet. But that air elemental is kind of a problem if Jordan keeps bashing in on me with it. Ah, disintegrate. Okay, probably, yeah, on the air elemental. So taking care of the air elemental, that's what's the biggest threat on the table. And uh, passing turn here. Of course, that royal is also super annoying. Makes it difficult for, uh, for me and for Ben to attack. There is a rainbow veil, which I think is pretty cool in a multiplayer game. And there's the order of light burst. So that's the pump knight from Fallen Empires. We see a lot of Fallen Empires in Ben's deck, which is kind of nice. And he's using the Lotus Veil. So how Lotus Veil works is when you use it, you can choose any type of mana. But after that, you have to pass the Lotus Veil to another player. And when then that player uses it, he can pass it along to somebody else. So he's now passed it to me, it seems, that white card. And he's cast an Angelic Voices, by the way. And that card pumps all your white creatures plus one plus one, but also all your artifact creatures plus one plus one. So it's pretty good in, in Ben's deck. I believe he's got a lot of artifact creatures as well. Tapping five here. Okay, there's Soul Canard, the Swamp King. That is pretty brutal. It's got Swamp Walk, so it can uh, just attack Jordan. Unfortunately for me, Jordan has that Royal Assassin. And it also gives me a life every time somebody plays a Black Spell, including myself. Order of Light Burr attacking here, probably attacking Jordan, because the Order has protection from Black. He can block it on the Tortoise, but then, of course, Jordan's going to, or Ben's going to pump it. Ooh, Jasmine Boreal. Counter Spell here from Jordan. Taking care of the Jasmine, so that's not happening. And it's really nice for me, of course, to see that Ben and Jordan are kind of like battling each other here. And for Jordan, that Order of Light Burr is a huge problem. The protection from Black means that he cannot kill it with his Royal Assassin. He's really going through his hand now, trying to find an answer. He's Now he's still on 17, it's still healthy. But remember, the Order of Light Burr, for two white, you can give it plus one, plus oh. And for one white, you can give it first strike, so he can actually pump it. Looks like he's passing turn here to me, and I'm playing a Dragon Whelp. Jordan is just not doing a lot. Not finding the lands he needs. And I'm just passing turn because of the Royal Assassin. I'm kind of stuck as well, so I'm hoping for Ben to kind of kill the... Okay, there we see a card moving, I think. Not sure what the story was behind that, but anyway, he's, he's taking another one. Remember, we're just playing casual here, and he's casting a Taunus' Coffin. That is actually quite useful. If he puts the Royal in the coffin, maybe I can make a deal here with Jordan. Or sorry, with Ben, that he puts the, um, the Royal Assassin in the coffin. So Taunus' coffin, um, I believe it's two and tap, and you can put target creature in the coffin. So it's exiled from the game. It's, it's gone until the coffin untaps or leaves play, and then the creature comes back tapped into play. And uh, Jordan, again, passing turn. He did find another Swamp, though, so there are some lands now. But still, I mean, if you compare that with the mana that I have and that Ben has, Jordan is very, very light on land. And the Royal Assassin is really what's keeping him alive here. And it looks like I'm attacking Brother Ben here. Probably did some talking with Jordan, saying, okay, if I'm going to attack Ben. Oh, and look at that. There's the response. I guess it's three to use Tons' Cuff. And there's the response, putting the Dragon Whelp into the coffin and then untapping it again. And he's also untapping the mana vault. So um, that attack kind of got me nowhere. At least now Ben has to invest mana in untapping the mana vault. And there is another island. Okay, so finally Jordan is finding some lands but not doing anything with it. I'm drawing extra cards with the Jam Day Tome. So this standstill is actually not too bad for me. And look at that. Ben has actually stopped attacking Jordan. Probably going to focus a little bit more on me. So maybe that attack with the whelp wasn't the smartest to do. But, I mean, if I can take care of the royal, I'm feeling kind of confident. Drain life on the royal assassin, probably. 
Yes, on the Royal. So I'm gaining a life. Going to 17. Royal is gone. Okay, going. To, oh, yeah, going to 18 because I played a black spell with um, Solkanar, the Swamp King. Attacking him now. Attacking Jordan for 5. Look at that. Going to drop to 9. Not attacking Brother Ben. That's kind of interesting. Maybe I'm worried that he's going to use the Tonsus Coffin again. But, I mean, he can still use it. I'm pretty sure Ben is now going to focus his attention on me because I'm the biggest threat on the board. I mean, that's kind of how it works. Tapping a lot of mana. What is he going to cast? Oh, Hand of Justice. That's so sweet. So Hand of Justice, I believe it's got six toughness. It's a 2-6. It's one of the first avatars in the game of Magic. Um, you can tap the Hand of Justice and tap three other white creatures to destroy any creature in play. So as soon as Ben is going to assemble enough white weenie creatures i mean we're in big big trouble and there's jordan casting a simbat that's actually going to help him maybe find some more lands but jordan is looking very weak at the moment and i think what's keeping him alive maybe is the fact that you know none both ben and myself doesn't want to kill jordan yet because maybe we need him to battle the other so i'm attacking with the dragon whelp here and i wonder who i'm attacking okay i'm attacking uh Ben, that makes sense. And actually, Ben's taking the damage. And I'm playing an air elemental. Look at my army go here. I'm also using my uh, the Lotus Veil. And uh, casting a Sorcerer's Queen. And uh, play that Sorcerer's Queen. So that's a great card. Like uh, a 1-1 one, one creature. You can tap it to make target creature an 0-2. So it's very powerful. But what is he going to do? Ooh. Okay. Yeah, he's playing um, a 5-5 five, five legendary creature. It's a vanilla. But it's really cool. It's got a cool name. Although I forgot about it right now. I'll get it up on the screen when I'm editing. So you can have a look at it. Torsten something. Really cool. And playing a bottle of Suleiman too. It's really nice, Ben. I'm liking your deck. A lot of flavorful cards in there. Really, really cool. And there is a Jalum Tome for Jordan, a.k.a. the Little Book. So the Jalum allows you to draw a card, and then you've got to discard a card as well. So first you draw, and then you discard a card of choice. So that will help Jordan kind of filter through his deck. I mean, he's still alive. If you look at his board, it's kind of... It's very weak. Very weak sauce. But... He's still here. As long as you're still in it, you can come back. Ooh, there's a big attack here. Five going on Jordan. Going to go to four. Attacking here. It looks like he's going to use... Oh, he wants to use the Hand of Justice. Now probably realizing that the Hand of Justice itself doesn't count as a white creature. He needs three separate white creatures. That legendary creature is also white, by the way. It's green and white. So he's going to use the Lotus Veil. He's going to flip... The bottle, oh, I think it's a miss. I'm so lucky here. If it wasn't a miss, he would get a 5-5 five, five flyer and he would be able to kill probably my air elemental, but now he takes full damage. Look at his life total. He's on five life. All of a sudden, things have really, really changed for the good for me and for the bad for Ben and Jordan. Look at them. Ben on five, Jordan on four, I'm on 19. Oh, man. He's showing his Jihad that it cannot play out. It wouldn't be that useful actually in this current board state, but it's a very beautiful card nonetheless. Oh, what can he do here? He's looking at the Order of Lightbird swinging in. Is he going to attack me? I mean, I could just make it an O2. He can say, oh no, it's got protection from black. Okay, so I'm taking the damage here. And oh, dust to dust. So he's probably destroying both of the books, right? Interesting. And I'm, I think I'm, I'm kind of thinking what I want to do if I want to use... Oh, Urkel's Recall! <laughs> I'm saving my book. I'm not really sure if that's actually that necessary because we're so... They're so low in life. I could have just, uh, you know, taken an extra last card with the Jayla, uh, Jadem and just let it die. Let it be removed from the game. But it's a cool way. I mean, Herco's Recall, really a card that I always enjoy using. What I can do, what I could have done, of course, with the Hercules is at the end of turn of Jordan, use Hercules on, on Ben to make sure that he couldn't put any of my creatures in the coffin. 
Maybe that would have been a better strategy. And Jordan going for his hand here, trying to find something to stay alive. Ooh, I think that's a Hell's Caretaker. That's such a cool card. In your upkeep, you can uh, tap and sacrifice one of your creatures and get a creature back from your graveyard. I think it goes directly into play as well. It's a really cool card. You can do a lot of fun things with it. And looking at the life totals here, Jordan's on five. Uh, sorry, Jordan's on four. Ben's on five. Attacking here. Oh, Jordan's a goner. And he's going to use his coffin to put the air elemental in. So he's going to drop to three. I'm not pumping it. Why am I not pumping it? Do I have a reason? Probably do. Yes, I do. I'm playing the earthquake. So maybe you're wondering why not just play one big earthquake? Um, what I wanted to do uh, was make sure that Ben was also out of mana. So I decided to first attack. Uh, ben and Jordan kind of see what would happen. So I forced Ben to use his Thomas' coffin. That way he tapped out completely and I was free to, after that combat phase, cast the Earthquake. So both Jordan and Ben are out, are out. I'm, I'm not sure if they want to now play with me again. I'm sorry, guys. But the cool thing is, after this game, we decided to play another game. So stick around because we're going to look at game number two. Game number two, and here we go. So Brothers Highlander, second game, starting on 20 again. It looks like, I don't know, Jordan showed part of his hand, not sure why. <laughs> anyway, he's on the play, it seems. Starting with the basic swamp, then it's Ben, and then it's my turn here. Abu Jafar, by the way, from Ben, that's pretty interesting. A soul net, and soul net's actually pretty good in multiplayer. Trust me, you can get a lot of life out of soul net. It's an artifact, every time a creature dies, Goes to the graveyard, that is. You can pay one, and then you can gain a life. And there's a Semite Healer from Ben. I like that Abu Jafar and Semite Healer. Now he can kill 1-1 one, one creatures with his Abu, and this Abu stays alive. That's pretty cool. The Walking Dead, the OG from Jordan there. Looks like we're all off to a pretty okay-ish start. I'm the only one without creatures, though. Ooh, a Thunder Spirit. From Ben, it almost looks like a white weenie deck that he's playing right now. Thunder Spirit 2 2 First Striker from Legends. And I'm playing my second Swamp here. I'm not doing all too much. Actually, I'm pretty open here for attacks. There's Drowned. Beautiful artwork on Drowned, by the way, from the Dark. 1 1 Blue Creature and 1 Black you can regenerate. There is a Mishra's Factory. Tapping the Factory. Playing a Mana Vault. Tapping the Vault. Ooh, are we gonna see a big creature? Oh, we're going to see um, Ecasian Town. So this brings in four soldier tokens. And look at that, attacking me for three. I'm going to go down to 16. And I think, guess he's still getting the tokens. So Ecasian Town, card from Fallen Empires. It's a sorcery for six, I believe. Yeah, one white and five. And you get four one one white creature soldier tokens, or citizen tokens, I should say. And. Uh, Works great with um, uh, with Hand of Justice. And there we see Jordan. What's Jordan casting here? For one black. Actually, not quite sure what that is. It's hard to see. Looks like it's a creature. Jordan's not attacking, just passing turn. He's got his regeneration army open. And uh, there we see the tokens of Ben, by the way. Those little cards are tokens. The funny thing was he wanted to put three um, one one uh, tokens in, and I said, well, actually, Ben, uh, you get four. Oh, look at that, he's attacking. I think he's actually attacking me with everything here. So that's four, five, seven, and I could play a terror here on one of the creatures on the Thunder Spirit, but, and gain a life from it. So that's something at least. I'm on 17, but now I'm gonna take the hits, taking five damage here. And there's also a Pegasus from Ben. So he's really storming out of the gates in this game. And I'm in trouble. This is not going to help me. Basil Monolith. That's not going to help me. And I think Jordan's card is a Stone Throwing Devils that has been altered, I think. Not 100% sure. If that's the case, it's a 1 1 first striker from Arabian Nights. Showing the Abu Jafar here. Maybe they're discussing how that works with First Strike. He is attacking with it. 
or not. Not quite clear what happened there. Anyway, Ben is untapping his mana vault. So I wonder what will happen next here. And it's, it's interesting, Jordan is actually not doing too much, kind of hanging back. And now we can really see, yeah, it's a stone throwing devils. Definitely on Jordan's side of the board. Is he going to attack me again? Uh, can you stop it, please, Ben? Okay, at least he now seems to be attacking Jordan as well because he's kind of splitting it up. I think he's attacking Jordan in a band. Is that really handy, though? Because he can just... Shouldn't he just attack with the one flyer? Okay, I'm, I'm going to drop to seven. I guess he's just attacking me. So I'm on seven life here. I'm so extremely low. What can I do? Playing the hive. Again, that's not going to help me. But the question now is, does Ben want to kill me already? I, I think I made quite an impression in that first game. Oh, Winter Orb. Oh, man. Okay, okay. He's changed it into a Chaos Orb. No, or is it a Winter Orb? No, I'm not sure. I think he plays it as a Winter Orb. If so, oh, man. That is... If so, that's so deadly to um, to Ben here because he's completely tapped, almost completely tapped out. Okay, I guess it is a Chaos Orb. Okay. Winter Orb, not that fun of a card to play in, in multiplayer, by the way. It can be very good, though. Uh, oh, and there's an Ecasian Javelin here. And again, that Thomas' Coffin. Look at the amount of creatures on the side of Ben. I mean, I'm, I'm so dead right now. Hopefully, I'm able to use some politics. Okay, there's a Chaos Orb flip on Thomas' Coffin. Looks like it's a Gentleman's Flip. Um, so Thomas' Coffin is gone. Maybe you're wondering, what's a gentleman's flip? That's if You can agree beforehand and say, okay, you don't actually have to flip the Chaos Orb. If you just activate it and choose a target, it destroys it. Personally, I, I, I always enjoy flipping. But I, I do get it. I mean, this, this was an uber casual multiplayer game. Uh, and let's see. Ben, are you attacking with the Pegasus? I think he's now going to attack Jordan at least for one little point. I mean, Jordan's still on 20, right? He's got to think about Jordan as well. He's getting kind of dangerous. He's attacking me. I'm going to go down to three with four citizen tokens. I've just got no creatures. This entire game, untapping my Basil Monolith, at least I can now make a Hive token, but that's not going to save me. I, mean, this, I guess I'm looking for blue mana. My hand must be full of blue cards. And that's, of course, the downside of playing with three colors. I mean, if you don't draw into the right lands, it's pretty much game over. And it's exactly what's happening to me in this second game. Jordan playing a land passing turn. He's being very like passive, actually, Jordan. Trying to build stuff up here. And let's see if Ben's going to kill me here. He's going to attack me. Going to attack uh, Jordan with the Pegasus. Going to attack me with four citizen tokens. Kind of forcing me to make a hive token. Um, block with the 1-1. One, one. And then the nice thing is, um, because the token does go to the graveyard... You do get a life. Okay, playing a lightning bolt, you're killing a citizen token. So that's going to give me a life, right? So I'm first going to kill a citizen token. Because he's attacking me with a citizen. So I'm not going to kill something else. Let's see how this is going to unfold. So I'm tapping one here to gain a life. going to go to four because of that bolt on a citizen token. Remember, the soul net is very important here in this situation. Again, blocking with a hive blocking one of his citizens. The problem is here, it's got that Samite healer. So I thought it would gain an extra life because it killed another uh, citizen token. But then Ben said, no, I've got the Samite healer. It's gonna prevent the damage. So, I mean, I'm still alive, but I'm barely alive. I'm on three still, but I think next turn is gonna be game over for me. Also a Dancing Scimitar on the side of Ben, by the way. Playing just another land. I'm not finding what I wanna find. I hope that these gentlemen will keep me alive long enough. Okay, this is good news for me because this, Air Elemental could be kind of threatening for Ben, so maybe he's like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep Timmy around here one more turn. You can do it, Ben. Just don't attack me. Just don't do it. Keep me around for one more turn. Give me some breathing space, please, so I can make some hive tokens and get some defense going. It's really gonna be crucial to see what Ben's gonna do here. I, I think I'm not I mean I'm not gonna win this game. I mean I'm too far behind, but hopefully I can just kind of stay in for a couple of more turns. So creating a wasp token, he's attacking me again with three citizen tokens, blocking one of the citizens, making out going to four, taking two damage, going to two here. I mean, 
This is not good. And also look at the air element. Okay, finding an island finally. Can I do something? The problem is I kind of need to keep mana open. Playing a phantom monster. Okay, that's actually okay-ish, but it's not going to help me. Because it's just one blocker. And if he's going to swing in with air elemental, I get a chump block with the phantom monster. You know, and Jordan, it doesn't make sense for Jordan to attack Ban because he's got the Pegasus and the Dancing Scimitar. So he can actually block in a Ban as well if he would want to. So it's, it's ah, man. I hope Jordan's, okay, Jordan's just going to pass. At least that's good. Diamond Valley, oh, man. I, it looks like Ban has just got this pretty much in the pocket, although Jordan has got some pretty good defenses on as well. I wonder if he's going to kill me now. Okay, he's being kind of a gentleman, not killing me yet. Thank you, Ben, for keeping me around. Hopefully, you're going to regret it, and I'm going to have some kind of super turn here and have all my defenses up and running again. Tapping four. Okay, playing a Primal Clay. Probably going to make it into a 2-2 Flyer because I need some blockers. So this is going to be a 2-2 Flyer, I think. I'm on two life. Passing turn to Jordan here. Jordan tapping his Swamps. Ooh, ooh, there, Oubliette. And he's going to imprison the Dancing Scimitar in response. Ben's going to eat the Scimitar. So he's going to gain five life. I'm going to gain a life because it's going to go to the Graveyard from the Soul Net. He's going to attack with the Air Elementals. So he's also going to lose four life. So at the end, when all the dust is cleared, I guess Ben is now on 21. Jordan's still on 18. That was a pretty, like explosive moment when an oubliette came in, in play. A lot of stuff happened. And look at that. Now Ben's going to attack me again. He's probably thinking you're getting too big. I'm going to attack you. Oh, he's actually attacking Jordan here. Oh, this is perfect for me. So we see a regenerate on the citizen tokens. It's pretty hard to follow what's happening. I think one of the citizen tokens dies because I'm gaining a life here. Uh, oh, he's shooting it down with the Javelinier because he doesn't have any black anymore to regenerate. That's actually a pretty good move of Ben getting rid of at least one of those annoying regeneration creatures. So Jordan has dropped to 14. And I finally have some breathing space. Two creatures on the board. I'm on five life. All my mana untapped. I've got every color. And I'm not doing anything. Oh, man, come on. The table is giving me a break here, and I'm not using it at all. Four cards in hand. What do I have? Double blue or something? Mahamuti Jin? Anyway, Jordan's turn here. Tapping blue. Couple of swamps. Cannot see how many. Three swamps. Okay, he's untapping them again. He's swinging into Ben, because Ben stepped out. Ben's going to drop to 17. And he plays a clone, I think, over the air elemental. That would make the most sense. Two 4-4 four, four flyers now. And I'm really happy with this development. That Jordan's kind of gone and, and be, become a part of the game. And that kind of means that now, you know, Ben has to uh, to take Jordan into account as well. And hopefully they start fighting each other a little bit. Rainbow Veil. Tapping the Rainbow Veil. Bring in a Titania song. Oh, that's so weird. I'm going to lose my light game machine. But it's not too bad. I'm actually going to get a lot of creatures on board. Because my Soul Ring is a 1-1. One, one, my Hive is a 5-5. Five, five, my Soul Net is a 1-1. One, one, and my uh, Basalt Monolith is now a 3-3. Three, three. So actually, he's just given me a lot of creatures. The problem is, he's turned off my Life Gain Machine. And I think that's just very important. But I'm, I'm on 5. I've got a lot of creatures. I'm kind of back in this match. The problem here for me is that Jordan has two Air Elementals. So I need to kind of take care of that. But of course, I can double block with Phantom Monster and Primal Clay. So I don't think he's going to attack me. I don't think he wants to trade an Air Elemental for Phantom Monster. Then, yeah. Okay, he's going to attack Ben again, it seems. Uh, he's going to prevent one damage with the semi Healer. So he's going to take three, drop to 14. I'm just surprised I'm still in this. And, and, and thankful, guys. Ooh, oh, Tetravus, 4-4. Four, four. Sweet altars with some flowers or something. And it's a 4-4 four, four flyer, right, from the Antiquities expansion. It's actually a 1-1 one, one flyer with three plus one plus one counters. In your upkeep, you can take a plus one plus one counter off and to make it a separate 1-1 one, one flyer, Tetravite. 
Ben not doing anything, just passing turn. Looks like he's kind of missed the opportunity. He's been dominant most of this game, but now we're in a phase where I, I feel Jordan is definitely ahead. And if I can find a way to kind of pump up my life total even further, I mean, I've got a chance here. Is this a drain life? Drain life for four. That's actually pretty good. No, mana drain. Oh, oh this was my ticket back into this match. If I could have drained, I wonder what it was going for. Air Elemental, probably for Tetravis. If I could have drained myself back, I would have gone to nine. Now I'm attacking with the hive, kind of trying to force Jordan in an awkward situation, but I feel like Jordan is gonna, I mean, I'm being pretty annoying now as well. I'm not being passive anymore. So I kind of feel like Jordan is gonna punish this play. Wow, 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 wow. That mana drain was so important. Oh, look at this, steal artifact. He's stealing my 5-5 five, five, five creature. Sweet. Okay, there he places Surrendip. A 3-4 flyer deals one damage a turn. Attacking with his two four fours. Is he gonna attack me or is he gonna attack Ben? I kind of feel like he's, he's attacking me. I, I, yeah, he's attacking me. So I'm gonna double block. And oh, I can't. He's attacking with everything. I thought he only attacked with two. No, he's attacking with three. So he cannot double block. So I've got to chum block two of those. Go to one, and, and I'm I'm as good as dead. I mean, do I have something up my sleeve? Hercules recall. Okay, okay. So he's got to bounce. And I'm going to get the Hive back. That's actually a pretty good move, you know, kind of working around that Steel Artifact. Now I could double block, go to one. Do I want to go to one? You can see me doubting. The thing is, if I go to one, Ben can kill me next turn with the Pegasus. But if if, if I chum block, that's what I'm doing. I'm chum blocking. I don't think, I think I should have taken the risk because having no flyers with the, with the current board state uh oh maze of vif as well when did he play that maze anyway oh and the maze is probably a reason not to double block by the way because even with the double block it wouldn't have killed it because then with the maze jordan could take the air elemental that it was blocking out of combat oh man this is just ugly okay he's choosing not to use the maze anyway it doesn't matter much he could have yeah he is okay okay it's, <laughs> it's a little bit unclear what is happening in the board state but Anyway, I chose to chum block. I do think it's a good decision because he could have just maced his air elemental out of combat. And yeah. The problem is I have no flyers. Oh, this is a cool card. Oh, what's it called again? Angus McKenzie, of course. Angus McKenzie. So legendary creature. One green, one blue, one white for 2-2. Two, two. Uh, and you can pay the same as the casting cost to tap it. And creatures attack and block is normal, but none deal any damage during combat. And all attacking creatures are still tapped. And they use this ability anytime before the attack damage is declared. So it's kind of a pillow fort strategy, like a walking fog. And uh, this is a big problem. Finally finding my second blue, playing a Mamo Dijin. I guess I'm still alive. Ben didn't attack me, so that's something. I think if I'm Jordan, I would just now... Attack with all my flyers on Ben, I think, because after that he can start using his Angus McKenzie as a fog machine and kind of prevent everything whenever he wants to. So, I mean, that is just a huge problem, right? I think this is exactly what Jordan's doing, attacking with this full Air Force attacking Ben right now. So he's got to probably chum block with the Pegasus, blocking one of the Air Elementals. Going to take seven then. Going to eat it, of course. And prevent the damage. Wow. I mean, it's so much happening here. So Ben's first going to go a life up. Then he's going to heal one. And he's going to chum block one. So seven. I think he's going to take five, right? Okay, so now he's on eight. And there's a giant tortoise. And okay, there, of course, is the Tetravis coming back again after that Hercules recall that I played on it the other turn. Untapping with Angus McKenzie, playing an AO pile, so that's two damage to any target. And uh, yeah, a lot of autographs on there in that one. Probably a story attached to it. Putting it back in the sleeve. Uh, it's a pretty good card, actually. What I like about the card is well, it's giving direct damage access to, um, to every deck. And it's, it's, it's not that mana heavy to use when you think of rocket launcher for example you got to pump in a lot more mana to make it count 
So AO pile is kind of this handy little little trick. There is steel artifact. Oh, actually, I'm talking about what AO pile does. It doesn't matter because there is a Tetravis on the board anyway, and I'm stealing right now. Sorry, uh, a Titania song on the board right now. So it's just a two-two creature in this case, and I'm using my steel artifact to steal the Tetravis of Jordan. Um, so that's pretty good. Hopefully, I can kind of keep it around. Because now I've got some blockers for Jordan. And look at Jordan go attacking again. I think he's just going all in for Ben. But Ben can use his Fog Machine. So he can use Angus McKenzie here. Or is he actually attacking me? Looks like he's attacking me. So I choose to block the... Oh, Howl from Beyond. I'm actually dying here. Oh, man. So what happened? I blocked two creatures. He maced one out of combat to save that one. And the one creature that I let, let go that I didn't block, he killed me with it. And I think that was an air elemental. So that Howl from Beyond killed me. I do like, I, I like getting killed by a Howl from Beyond. It's a cool card, man. No worries, Jordan. But uh, would have loved to kind of be able to play a little bit longer. And of course, for Jordan, it makes sense because he knew... Like, okay, if I kill Timmy, I get my Tetravis back. So you can see that on the board as well. So that's an extra incentive for him. So maybe with the Steel Artifact in some kind of weird way, I kind of killed myself. And there is an attack. And I'm kind of thinking, you know, Ben is going to use his Angus McKenzie here. Right? That's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm thinking about. Nothing happens here. So I guess he used his Angus passing turn again. And um, I mean, this could this could take a while. And actually, Jordan then is slowly gonna gonna die on his own surrender for free. This is really the kind of ending of this match. <laughs> He's on a nine turn clock in that regard. Oh, rocket launcher! That is interesting. I just well, we discussed just discussed this card. So rocket launcher, um, it's four to cast. And uh, anytime you pay two, you can deal one damage to any target. But the turn that you activate it is also the turn that it, it gets sacrificed. So you can only have one turn to kind of play with your rocket launcher and then it's out of the game. But that's enough for Jordan. Jordan can use a rocket launcher to, you know, kill the Angus McKenzie. Oh, no, it's not. It's oh, I keep forgetting about the, the Titania song. It's just a creature. It's nothing else. It's just a creature. Dust to dust to make matters worse. This Titania song is kind of messing with my mind. I keep seeing ways out, but there, there's no way out. What can Jordan do? Obsanius Golem, 4-6. Beautiful creature, beautiful flavor text, but not very interesting at this point. And this Serenip is just slowly eating away at Jordan here. He's already on 8. He's going to drop to 7 next turn. What can he do really? Nothing. So he first needs to take care of the Titania song before he can do anything else. And uh, yeah, I think, okay, okay. He's looking up some lands, of course, with the land tax. I'm like, what's happening here? Okay, he's using the land tax. Oh, man. I'm surprised actually that Jordan has more lands. It looks like... Oh! Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, um, with her, you can steal creatures, but there's a counter spell from Jordan. And I think that's necessary or else he would have won already. But, I mean, I don't really see a way out for Jordan here. That Angus McKenzie is so dominant. That Angus McKenzie in combination with the Titania song, that means... That oh, control magic! I hope this resolves. In response, using Angus McKenzie, of course, so that there's no damage for this turn. Oh, and then Jordan needs a disenchant or something to get rid of the control magic. Is Jordan actually going to win this one? Next turn, he can swing in, and I don't see any... I don't see any flyers on the side of... of uh, oh, what's that? What's that? Okay, no, no, no. That's not going to do it. I want to say I don't see any flyers on the side of Ben. Yeah, this is the blacksmith. A really cool creature. 2-2 two, two creature. You can tap to prevent 2 damage dealt to an artifact creature. So it's actually quite flavorful with Titania Song on as well. And uh, and kind of on theme, I guess, with the deck of Ben with also the Semite Healer kind of healing and preventing damage. So I really like that. 
But it looks like he's dead now. Gonna drop to five. He can attack with all his creatures in the air, right? That's two air elementals and a surrender. That's 11 damage. He's on eight. Or is he on nine, actually? Is that a, th a three on that dice? I think he's on nine. Doesn't matter, though. He can attack for 11. He can prevent the damage. Go to 10. He can sack a creature. And then he'll be on one. I, I, think, I think he can end this being on one. He can sack the blacksmith, which is a two-two. Interesting, so he's only attacking with, yeah, okay, so that's a three, so he's on nine. So he's attacking with two air elementals. Uh, he's going to prevent one, take seven damage, go to two. Interesting, and I wonder if he's going to use his Diamond Valley in the end step. That's something I would do. He can also sack the um, Mishra's Factory, by the way. He can make it a three, three, and sack, and then he can go to five. Interesting, Ben is not doing that on the end step of Jordan. I think I would have definitely sacked a creature for life here. Ooh, Arcade is Sabbath. Oh, <laughs> what a game. Arcade is Sabbath is 7-7, seven, seven, one of the legendary Elder Dragons. 7-7 seven, seven flyer, and actually it also boosts, I believe, all the creatures of, uh, of Ben that are untapped, right? You get some kind of bonus. Is it plus O oh, plus 1 or something? I think it is plus O plus one. This is pretty cool. So Jordan, I mean, if he attacks right now, yes, he's gonna sack a creature, right? If he attacks, let's say he attacks with three flyers, one flyer is gonna die. Okay, he's playing a reconstruction. There is a reconstruction on a Tetravus and he's attacking with everything, but I don't think that's necessarily a good idea because he's gonna block one with the seven, seven flyer. He can use Diamond Valley, he can prevent the damage. Or is it enough? Is it enough? He's going to deal 7 damage. He needs 5 life. Okay, so I've slowed it down. As you can see, the screens changed a little bit. There were some technical difficulties, but I've slowed it down. So, he's on 2. Jordan's attacking with all his flyers. The thing is, Arcadia Sabbath gives plus O plus 2 as a bonus to all the creatures, right? So, that means he's using his factory. He's pumping the factory. It's now a 3-3. Three, three. It's got the bonus, so it's a 3-5, but here is where it gets um, tricky because Arcade Sabbath only gives bonus to the untapped creature. So Ben is thinking that the factory gets the bonus so that he gains five more life. So then he's on seven, but actually that's not true because it doesn't get the bonus. But let's say he's on seven. He's attacking with everything, blocking one, taking seven damage, preventing one with a semi healer, ending on one life, and, and kind of getting an extra turn for himself. But... Unfortunately for Ben, he overlooked that one little line on Arcade Sabbath where it says it has to be an untapped creature. And I think I now remember this because I think we were like, I think, Ben, I've got bad news for you. Let's actually listen into some of the original audio from the match because I remember that we were discussing it. So let's, so let's listen. Yeah, well, well I mean, there, there is, you can always buy a turn by eating the Yeah, the Arcades, right? You can... Yeah, but I, I declared it all. I'm not going to ask for a takes it back to there. Like, a well fought win. Well done, Jordan. I'm sorry, I, didn't, I honestly didn't realize that. No, no, it's fine. I totally didn't register as well. What would have happened? Oh, these are the kind of cards I needed to sell. So there you have it, the somewhat uh, unconventional ending of this uh, of this video and this second game. Uh, it was really fun, Jordan and Ben, to play with you guys. Hopefully in the future we can have some more matches like this. Brothers Highlander, I really, I like it. I think it's cool, it's flavorful. I'm definitely going to make a Highlander uh, deck as well. I actually got a couple on the shelf, I think, that or within the uh, the 10 point system, because I, I usually don't play with that many power cards anyway. Um, so, well, thank you um, for this match. And also thank you for watching another video right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you wanna support the channel, there are a few really simple things you can do. First off, you can hit the like button, that thumbs up. That really helps a lot. Another thing you can do is leave a comment. Tell me what you think of these games and uh, if you would play Highlander what kind of color combination would you play would love to hear from you and also you can of course subscribe on the Timmy Talks channel if you're not a sub yet subscribing really really helps the channel grow and it's really really appreciated so if you have a moment I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe 
on Timmy Talks, talking about how you can help the channel. You can also become a patron via Patreon. We've got our very own Patreon page. There's probably an info card popping up right now. Click on that card that will take you to the Patreon page and you can also support the channel financially. It already starts with a single dollar a month and it really makes a lot of difference. It really helps me to keep doing what I'm doing. So if you're interested and if you can miss a dollar, uh, click on the info card and check out the Timmy Talks page. And it's got a lot of perks. One of them is that your name will appear in the end scroll. How cool is that? So after every episode, I show an end scroll, your name can be there. Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, amazing, wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het als ik het als zomba kan zien.